international matchmaker and a relationship consultant. Happy Friday to each every one of you our summer is doodling down so make sure you do your best to enjoy it while it is still here so today we're talking about about social media and your love life dating in the social media era because this is the social media era for sure so first of all let's just you have to imagine like like, first of all, everyone's life isn't as perfect as it seems on social media. So that is the main thing. Like, that's the main thing I want to put out here. Because a lot of us are seeing the pictures that people are posting, and we're sort of developing an idea in our minds what their life is like. And then we tend to decide that their life is so much better than ours. And how do you know this is true? Based on some pictures, you don't know. You can never imagine how much airbrushing, how much tweaking, how much filtering. And nobody sits down and just takes, well, not nobody, but for the most part, when you're scrolling through social media accounts, you are not looking at candid slices of these people's lives, no. You're looking at the picture that they sat and chose one out of 1,500. Then they have to choose how much different filters for it. Then they maybe even edited the photo. Who knows? But you have to understand that we're all in the same boat. We're all trying to look better than we are. We're all trying to be a little better than we actually are too as well. And, and that is what you see playing out on social media. So don't use that to judge your own, own life. Give your love, give your relationship a social media break, okay? So you guys need to have some time between the two of you where you're not on social media at all, like where you air out, where you're not doing any postings for this entire week. You know you're not doing any postings for this entire weekend, where you're not there scrolling on your phone while you guys are together. So definitely if you want a healthy relationship, you need to set up some time where neither of you are on social media because honestly social media is ruining our relationships is ruining our family units the way we think the way we act and the way we communicate with each other as human beings we got to put a stop to that i mean i'm not social media is not all bad because hey you're here on our social medias right follow us on twitter at love tv Instagram at Love Connection Show, right here on Facebook at the Love Connect TV, and make sure you go to our website at www.theloveconnection.ca. Don't tune out each other while you are together. So if you're having alone time with your man or your woman, don't tune out each other where you're scrolling, he's scrolling. Like the two of you sitting down in front of television scrolling on, on your phones, this is not time spent together. You are not actually together. Being together is more than physically being in the same room. You need to be actually involved in what's going on with your partner, what they're talking about. They need to be actively listening to what you're saying. And you can't do this while you're scrolling. I know we like to think we're all multitasking gods, but it just doesn't work out for some of us, okay? And here's some statistics that I found out. 45% of us say that, that social media had a major impact on our relationship. That's 45% guys some years ago this would have been unheard of but not in today's life so if something has such a significant impact on our relationship and so many of us it is important and we must know how we're dealing with this and we must have proper healthy ways to dance around the this entire subject and that is what our show today is all about so make sure you're taking your notes make sure you're listening chime in in the comment section you have anything to say about what i'm 
here chatting about, let me know. And I, I'm always here to answer questions live on air, so don't hold them back, okay? It is important to know that we sometimes worry that social media is too frivolous to argue over. But these are real feelings with real consequences. You guys get that? So you're upset about something that your partner did on social media. You want to talk about it, but your partner is acting as if it's just so Social media, like why are you acting so upset? Like it's not so serious, but it is so serious. It's affecting 45% of our relationships. It's a major part of our life. This is real feelings. I'm really upset about the way you're conducting yourself on social media. So this needs to be addressed. You can't act like it's so frivolous because it's <laughs> it's just Twitter. I just tweeted that. Like why are you so upset? I'm upset. Because the feelings are real, because what you said hurt my feelings, and we need to talk about it because it is not as frivolous as you are trying to make it seem. All right, guys? And prioritize quality time without social media. So I just touched on that a little bit before. I'm going to touch on it again. You need to prioritize alone time with each other without social media. So you need to make it clear to each other that it is important to both of you that you spend time alone really alone like not alone and your twelve thousand followers as well not alone and you know all your facebook friends as well literally really alone okay and it needs to be a priority and a new thing that i found because you guys know i am the relationship consultant it is my goal to be the premier relationship consultant because I feel like we need to hear these messages from people that look like us, who understand us and live the lives that we do. And I believe that that is me. So, you know, bet on me, guys. Come to me with your relationship issues. I feel like I am the consultant for you, especially if you watch my show because then you know me very well, right, guys? <laughs> so, now, you know, after sex back in the day, it was like a smoke and a hug and a cuddle, that type of thing, a little drink of water and a cuddle. But nonetheless, the cuddle was there. Now it's like after sex, people are literally going to scroll on their phone. Like they're replacing the warmth of the hug with the warmth of the glow of your screen. This has got to stop, guys. So you got to think about this. Wow, that was such a amazing, mind-blowing sex. I really enjoyed myself. I'm so happy to be so intimate with my partner. Okay, time to go check my Instagram post. Like, what? No, guys. So that has to cut out for sure. Anytime you catch yourself going on your phone or your device after you have made love with your partner, kick yourself in the ass because you're really messing up here. Okay, guys? <laughs> you should always make your partner feel more important than your phone. Are you guys doing that right now? Are you doing that? Does your partner know and understand that they are more important in your life than your phone is? If you were to lose your phone, you would to lose your partner. Which one would hurt you more, right? So your partner doesn't need to be playing a guessing game about how you feel or what you mean or what you want. They need to know, ah, he wants me. He loves me for me. And he's happy to put his phone down to spend all his time with me, right? His free time with me, I should say. So you should always make your partner feel more important than your phone. You need to dedicate at least one hour per day of screen free time together. This is my, this is Dr. Taj's um, medicine or prescription. So so each of you, I'm writing your prescription right now. So you are to spend one hour per day minimum without screen time with your partner. So not on your laptop, not on your tablet, not on your phone. You guys are just together spending time doing stuff, reconnecting. You know, there are lots to do off of the internet, guys. So don't let the internet take our lives and take our humanity away from us. Take away our ability to communicate, understand each other, and our ability to want 
want to be in each other's presence because seeing each other on social media is not enough. You, you know what I'm trying to say? This is not enough, guys. We need to come back to person to person, people to people interactions. And this is where we start from. So one hour minimum every day, no screen time between the two of you. Check in with your partner before posting. Yes. Yes, you should do that. Before you're going to be posting something or if you're about to post something is making you think what your partner would think about this, definitely check in with them. Don't just be wild making posts especially if you're even having the inclination that, that maybe my partner may not like this right so why are you going ahead with it and like, like you have to always prioritize your living breathing human partner over anything else like you need to prioritize your actual, actual man your actual woman who is with you than like your crush on instagram this is madness like you can't be posting things to get likes from um, people that you are interested in on the internet and you are doing that without any thought as to how, how your actual partner that you are really with feels nah guys this can't work like this you gotta cut that out and in relationships one partner is usually like i find from working in the field being an expert in the field i should say <laughs> i find that one partner is usually more private than the other so if you've got somebody who's not a big share or private maybe they don't even have social media if that still exists today <laughs> then you have to come to their level not like be as private with them but make it clear to them that i want to show off our love i want to show off your picture i want the world to know that you're my boo. I'm not going to be posting, posting every day, but you know, just a couple of shots up. And these are the shots that I find to put up. Do you like this picture of yourself? That sort of thing, guys. It doesn't hurt to have that conversation because if you love them, that conversation won't hurt. No conversation just hurt. Anyway, you need to use real world boundaries as your social media guide. So, if you, you if you were walking with your woman, if you would not say nice, yo, she you fine as hell to a random woman walking down the street, or maybe once seen a couple of times, if you wouldn't do that in real life, don't do this on social media because it is the same thing. Your woman coming across you commenting on a woman's picture, nice, with like six eyes and two e's. This is upsetting. It's just as upsetting if you did it right beside me in public, okay? Ladies, if you would not just be doing <laughs> sticking out the tongue like with wet drips coming off of it because you saw a fine man, don't come and do this now on social media. It is the same connotation. If your man comes and sees the licky lips and the tongue out on a fine man's picture and you comment to that, this is just as upsetting as if you did it in real life. Okay? So just always keep that in mind. Use real world boundaries as your social media guide. This is the best piece of advice, I think, for this entire show. And it is this. Address discomfort quickly. Like, immediately. Don't sit down and fester on it when it comes to the social media posting. So if you want to know why are you adding random people, what do you think you guys need to do? Ask them, why are you adding random people? This is upsetting me. Who is it? Who is it that you seem to be having an online relationship with? Immediately address discomfort. Do not allow them to go on because sometimes our partner will not know that this is not okay because you never said that it wasn't okay. All right? And, and the, you need to look out for the people who are too private because there's such a thing on social media that like you're refusing for example a couple came to me they're upset because he is refusing to change his facebook status and they have been in a relationship for over a year it's upsetting but he's trying to explain that oh he's private and he doesn't want anybody in his business and i'm saying this, this is suspicious 
it's been a whole year. You're in a committed relationship. What would be the reason that you would not want to change your Facebook status? So it's the same in your own personal life. Okay, guys? Too private should ring alarms, and there's something wrong with that. But on the flip side, there is such a thing as too much sharing, way too much PDA on your social media. It's like, we get it. You're in love. You love your man. You love your woman. Like, yeesh, we don't need to be seeing you in bed, grabbing her ass, grabbing her breasts, licking by his penis, all this madness on our, our social media pages when we're just trying to kind of get a break from our life. So there's such a thing is too much PDA, guys. And be mindful of if and when you're doing it. Attention-seeking behavior. Nobody should be doing that. Like, there's such a thing as too much photos. And if your woman is doing attention-seeking stuff on the internet, this is a big alarm. Because why do you need these random strangers' attention so much? Am I not enough? Is my love for you not enough. The way I feel for you and the attention that I give you as my real, real world woman, this is not enough? Why? You need to have a discussion about that. I never be okay with that. These attention secrets, like none of us should be dating them until they have fixed this faultiness in their character. Because that's what it is, guys. That's what it comes down to. And suspicious activity. Take note of it. If the activity is suspicious, if you feel a way about it, talk to them about it. Address it, like I said, immediately. Like another client of ours, he was doing suspicious activity, such as adding random people, like adding random friends that he wasn't adding before. Like he started off with like 50 friends, and he had been doing that for like two years then all of a sudden he's adding one hot girl number one hot girl number two hot girl number six hot, hot girl number 36 you know this is suspicious what are you doing what are you are you gone on the prowl are you trying to find a new wife like hello so address suspicious activity point it out to your partner maybe they may not see it in the same way that you do all right so that you know is just little pointers on social media and dating in the social media era. Now I want to go with you guys some etiquette on dating. Like if you're meeting somebody special or you're seeking a partner, um, these are a list of things that you should or should not do. So we can call them Taj's social media etiquette list. Okay, so here we go. First of all, use recent pics. So if you're on the internet looking for love, what do you think your chances are if you're using pictures from your high school reunion and now it's your retirement party, right? No, you need to be using recent pictures. So, and then also you need to have a good selection of pictures on your social media or your profile or whatever. So different pictures, different angles. You know, so we can see what you really look like. Like, let us be the judge of who you are, what your best angles are or are not. Not you just give us 100 pictures from this profile. We can't gauge what you look like from this, okay? Don't leave us in the dark. <laughs> no oversharing of your personal life story on your social media, if you are looking for love, that is. Okay, so your potential girlfriend is going to come across and find out, oh, oh, when you had been stealing and the law laws or whatever and that sort of thing. We don't need to hear all of that if we're potentially looks for perusing social media to find love. So think about your oversharing. sharing like too much personal information, your health issues, uh, emotions emotional issues, mental health issues. This is too much information. And we don't need to know that right off the bat if we're just looking for love on social media. Next, I mean, it kind of goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway, because in this day and age, people still need to hear this. No dick pics. And while we're on the topic, no vagina 
fix either because apparently you ladies are doing that too. This is madness. Guys, like you don't just pop up and send somebody a picture of your penis in the hopes of what? Like how should this become a relationship, okay? And don't always be on. If you're looking for love on social media and you're starting a budding your relationship you can't show yourself as a grown adult consistently online when are you living your life when are you doing this work that you say you do when are you taking care of your home when are you taking care of your kids like you know what i mean so don't let your potential partners see you consistently always online next thing with the social media dating like etiquette if you're not exclusive you need to say so if you're not the only one or i'm not the only one for you we need to address that and establish that right right away don't let me be showing you off telling people oh this is my man and then later i see you on somebody else's social media all hugged up kissed up at a party how is that all? and then when i confront you you're talking about Oh, we're not serious. We're not nothing yet. We have no title. You know what? I should have been made aware of that. And how do you make us aware of that? Let us know. If you're not exclusive, say so. All right. And also, like, you need to definitely do video chat at some point. My rule is within at least four to five conversations you would have gone to some form of video chat some sort of video service so that you can actually verify that the person is who they say they are a lot of us are getting tricked and dipped out here don't let that happen to you in 2018 or 2019 because it's too late in the social media game i mean catfish is a wide syndicated show none of us should be falling for this nonsense anymore they, they can't video chat you the love is not real and you don't have no time for that all right so that is the rule of thumb and, and keep receipts basically what that means keep track and note of the things that your potential social media boo is saying where they said they would be where they said they work who they say their family is who they say they live with keep receipts on these stuff because you're probably going to need that later on down the road because a lot of people are pretending to be something that they're not and the only way to weed them out is by confronting them with the information or slash lies that they have already fed you so that is that guys for my points and notes on um, on social media dating and your love life if i missed any and you want to add your own definitely do that in the comments and let me hear Ooh, are you guys loving this are you loving my hair today so adorable and of course it's by the one and only jackie at loves hair studio right here in toronto so if you want to get laid and look fresh like i do then go see my girl and you guys love this it's like one of my favorites i got it from the Seagull boutique and if you want to look this fly as they have me looking good each and every friday then you need to go check them out on their social media pages don't ignore their instagram the Seagull boutique that's m-a-s-e-g-o and they're also on twitter and they're right here on Facebook as well. Again, that's M A S E G O Boutique. And woo, Pink Paradise. That's what today's set is called. And you can definitely see why. The people at PRF events do a stellar job for me each and every Friday. And then they go on to do awesome events all weekend and all week long they do birthday parties weddings baby showers graduation parties retirement parties so if you have one coming up and you want to look like a million dollars and probably only spend half of that 
then you need to go check out PRF events and they are also on social media too. So you can go check them on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and that is PRF events. Okay. So that is that guys. And now, oh, well, you know what that means when you hear that bell. Do you know what it means? <laughs> if you're brand new, then it means that it's time for the match of the week. And what is the match of the week, guys? Every week, I will be featuring a potential husband or a potential wife. So I speak about them, what they like, what they're into, what they're looking for. And stay tuned because it may potentially be your future wife or your future husband. So let's go. Should I start with males or should I start with females? I will start with the men. Oh, men, it is your lucky ask for a promotion at work or you need to ask for a raise. <laughs> so here we go, because he may be your man, all right? He is a Christian Grenadian and he is best based in Mexico. He is seeking a wife of any background. He is who is based in North America. So you can be of any background, but you got to live in North America. Is kind, handsome, liberal, but with Christian values. You guys know what that means. He's open minded and such, but it is all under the umbrella of being a Christian. He wants that you should have a zest for life. You should also be Christian. He's ready to settle down. He's childless and he's currently seeking the same. So if you have a lust for life, passion, you're educated, you're well spoken, you're a Christian woman, you're gorgeous. This might be the man for you. So you contact me and I will suss you out. Now it's time for the female potential wife, guys. All you future would be husbands, listen up, because she may be your girl. So she's a female and she hit 30 years old. She's well rounded, educated. She's a Canadian girl with a Jamaican background. She longs for kids she's currently childless and she's seeking the same preferably she's gorgeous fun loving young at heart warm personality she seeks an established hard-working very kind very masculine she wants a man's man and she is based in toronto and she's seeking somebody who is based in north america so outside of north america today is not your day guys but new days will come for you so that was that, guys, for the match of the week. So now it is time for the Dear Taj moment. And what is a Dear Taj moment? If you have any love or relationship questions that you would like me to answer, you send them in and I answer every single one personally. Don't worry, nobody else will be reading your information. And if you would like me to answer on air, then you type answer on air when you send it in. So here we go. Dear Taj, my man's ex is attacking me on social media. I don't, don't know what to do. He's already told her to stop, and she didn't. She keeps writing posts about me and even tagging me. I'm so embarrassed and upset. What do I do? Signed, Victim. Well, hello, victim. Thanks for taking a moment out to write this letter to me. I'll try my best to help you out. Next thing, you're not a victim. Don't label yourself as that. Is that your man spoke to her? And do you have proof that your man spoke to her, though? If you don't, definitely get that proof. But see him send her the message. See him talk to her. Uh, she's tagging you, so you need to put a post on her wall. Like, this is my 